Vernon Hockey Voices. Our special guest today is Cole Ekala. And where are you at this very moment, Cole? Uh, currently, I live in the suburbs of Boston. And what are you doing in Boston? Yeah, I'd say since, since I left Vernon, my life's taken quite an interesting path, you know, going through college in upstate New York at Union College. And then, you know, kind of chapter two is the, the real life. And it's taken me uh, to Boston, Connecticut, South Africa, Ireland, North Carolina. And, you know, I now find myself back in Boston, um, you know, following work around all those places. Right. So what kind of work are you involved in? Yeah. So I, I don't know if you remember back from my Vernon Viper days, but I always had a keen interest in becoming a doctor in the medical field. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of followed that dream through college. And, you know, in college I did uh, both economics and pre-med. Um, and I took the MCAT, applied to some med schools and didn't get in my first year and uh, just made the decision, you know, as a backup plan to use my economics degree. Uh, I started, you know, briefly for about nine months in the accounting industry with a company called PwC in Boston. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, I got connected with a former father of a union college teammate who was in the, the biotech healthcare space. Yes. Um, and I've since been working with him for about uh, six or seven years across a range of um, healthcare biotech companies, primarily on the corporate side. So corporate uh, strategy, business development, investor relations, uh, stuff like that. So it's an exciting, exciting field that I really enjoy. Yeah, sounds like it. So I see you are the director of business operations for the company, which is what, Radius Health? Is that right? Yep. Yep. So that's where I'm at now, Radius Health. Um, I, I've been with them for about two years today, pretty much. Um, started in a business development role. Um, we acquired a, a new uh, pharmaceutical product uh, about 18 months ago uh, that I was involved with acquiring. And, you know, uh, my boss kind of rolled me into that uh, yep. product into a more business operations role, Yes. Um, helping to build the asset and progress the asset. Wow. When you were playing hockey here in Vernon, now you were looking to get an NCAA scholarship go to a good university and then forge your career. But did you anticipate for a moment that this would be the career that you would be in? Um, not at all. You know, I, I really had my head set on, you know, becoming a doctor and then, you know, th through college, you know, I, I held myself to that, which was a lot of extra work and yeah. uh, a lot of extra studying and, you know, studying for the MCAT on your, you know, you know off hours. Um, but then, you know, I soon realized it takes a lot of commitment, dedication work to, to go down that field. And, you know, doing that in parallel with training for hockey um, was a pretty significant demand. And so that's why I ended up getting the economics degree as well, um, almost as a backup plan that I could see myself through down the doctor field. But, you know, if it, if it didn't work out on the first shot, I um, would have liked to enter the business uh, side of things. But, you know, I, I did not expect finding myself kind of in a industry that allows me to do both, um, mm -hmm. use, use that uh, education on the pre-med side. Mm -hmm. um, in the business world. So um, it's actually a great role that kind of, you know, allows me to use both the, the pre-med info and also the business degree I got. Now, I'm sure Dr. Gavin Smart would be very proud of you now. I know you, you had a lot of talks with him about the medical field when you were here. And uh, I think to some extent he inspired you, did he not? I did. Yeah. He, he had, uh, Dr. Smart was a, a great resource like yourself on the educational side. And you know, we were talking about Hoon quickly before this. I think, you know, one point I wanted to make was when you look back at Vernon, the, the support staff around that team was exceptional. Um, you know, from, from the media box with yourself and Todd Miller and, you know, you in the educational space as well. Um, but then out to like Hoon and Dr. Smart, you know, that it, it's crazy to look back at the staff we had around us there and how that really kind of helps prepare you for the future. Yeah. And Lon Fraser, you remember Lon? And Lon, Lon yep. Fraser. Duster, yep. So he's part of our Vernon uh, Voices uh, series as well. Um, awesome. he's, he's retired now, but he still does the odd thing for the Vipers. That's awesome. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, what, what drew you to the Vernon Vipers in the first place? Yeah, so, um, you know, I always wanted to play junior hockey. I was at the time playing a 18 under triple a in yes. Philadelphia. Um, and I, and I really had, um, interest from a couple leagues, one being the NAHL, I think it was the Bismarck Bobcats at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty close to going to play for them. And, you know, as, as you remember, my brother was in Vernon the year before yes. me and he spoke extremely highly of the, both the team and the league. And that was exciting to me. And so, um, 
I remember calling the Bismarck coach and, you know, saying, look, I'll, I'll come play for you if I don't make this Vernon Vipers team. So, um, which, which, <laughs> which looking back, I'm surprised, you know, he let me take that chance, but, you know, I went out to Vernon open camp kind of, you know, just with, you know, just with the hope of making the team, I didn't have much interaction with the coaching staff prior to that. And, you know, luckily I had a pretty good camp and uh, ended up making the team and I've had the opportunity to play with my brother for a year, which is really cool. Yes. Was that your first chance to play with him on a team? I believe it was. Yeah. I don't think before that I had ever played with him. He was always, you know, one level up above me being two years older. So you went two championships with the Vipers back to back. I heard a rumor that you'd won some championships before you came here as well. I did. So I, I, I let's see, I think the last championship before that was 12, 12 and under uh, with uh, Colorado Littleton Hawks peewee team. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, you look back at all the championships and there's such a consistent um, kind of framework around them. You know, a great coach, a team that was bought into the, to the vision and the mission and, um, you know, s- some skill, but ultimately, you know, a good, you know, cast of characters that all did different things and worked well together. So I think 12 and under, I won the Nas- USA National Championship. And oh. I think that was in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, but then after that, I think, you know, the, the two Vernon championships were my next and two, two, of, two of the most fun, that's for sure. And then you went to Union College and you win again in, in your senior year. Uh, yep. 20, yeah. So 2014, 2014, was it? 20, 20, 2014. Yeah. So yeah, I was just writing down some stuff. I was like, I, I couldn't believe the, the last RBC Cup was 12 years ago. And, and that national championship at Union was eight years ago. So yeah. <laughs> life moves fast. But um, no, that was really exciting, too. I remember joining that Union team. And again, it had a similar framework. It, you know, had a great group of guys. Um, you know, it wasn't, it, it's not a big name school that everyone's heard of. Um, so going into, you know, I never, ever expected we would win a national championship. Um, but once we got there, you know, the team just got better each year. Uh, it was great coaching staff. Um, it was Nate Lehman my first year and then Rick Bennett the following three years and just a great team of people, um, you know, that, you know, we, we made it to the NCAA for the first time my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we made it every year after that. Mm-hmm. Um, we made it to the frozen four, my sophomore year, we lost first round. And, you know, looking back at it, it's like y- you go to the frozen four as union college and you're not used to yeah. sold out stadium and all the lights and yeah. cameras and action and all that. So I think we were caught off a little guard. Um, and we lost first round to Corey Kane at Ferris, Ferris state actually. All right. Um, and then, you know, we made it back my senior year with a team that primarily had been there before. So it wasn't as much of a shock. And we had all this great experience and a great team where making it back to the Frozen Four, we really thought we had a chance. And um, yeah, it was cool. I remember, you know, some of the stats, we, we played Minnesota in the final. Um, you know, they had, let's say, 20 plus uh, athletic scholarships. We didn't have any athletic scholarships. Let's say they had 20 plus NHL draft picks. I think we wow. had two. Uh-huh. Um, their school has 20,000 plus people. We had, uh, I think 2000. So yeah. it was really like David versus Goliath situation that, you know, looking back, I, I don't know if they'll ever win again. I, I really hope they do, but, um, it was, it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. The team finished in the middle of the pack this past year in the yeah. ECAC. Now that East coast athletic conference that you're in with union, that's a pretty good conference, isn't it? I mean, you've you got Harvard and in, in there, you've got, uh, Quinnipiac perennial strong team and so on uh it must have been pretty good hockey yeah it was, a, it was a really good league and um i would say coming out of uh vernon most of my options were in that league yes um you know i was talking to some of the ivy league schools clarkson uh union obviously and it was just a good league that i think values both education and athletics mm-hmm. um across the board all schools are great athletic programs all schools are a great educational schools. so i think that's ultimately what drew me there um, and there were a lot of Vernon Vipers there. You know, we had to play the Jones Twins yes. every year at Quinnipiac. And uh, Mike Lytle was at Colgate. Uh, let's see, Kerr was at um, Princeton. So um, we ran into a lot of the former Vernon uh, players. And obviously I had a bunch of Powell River guys on my team as well. Matt, yeah. the Bodie brothers, and then uh, Dan Carr. So a lot of BCHL presence there. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, I looked at the list. What what other than winning the national championship uh, with Union? What's your most memorable memory of that experience? The four years there. Well, that's great. Um, I, I would have to say the national championship was yes. probably the most memorable experience. Um, you know, both both winning it in person, 
Um, I always, I always joke my, my dad growing up my whole life, um, made it to the frozen four twice with huh. Northern Michigan. And he always said, let me, let me know when you make it to the frozen four twice. So I remember walking out of that rink and going right to him and say, let me know when you make it to the frozen four twice and win and win yeah. one of the two. So that was a really cool moment. Um, I don't know. There's a couple of goals. I, you know, I didn't score my, my role in union really shifted from my role in Vernon. I kind of found myself, uh, somehow as a goal scorer in Vernon. And, uh, when I went to union, you know, I, I played primarily a kind of a fourth line grinder role. So right. I didn't score many goals, but I guess, you know, one that's very memorable to me was against uh, Boston college. I think my junior year in the NCAA yeah. tournament. And I, you know, I, in, in my, you know, single digit minutes of ice time, I found myself <laughs> kind of just over the blue line and, and, in shot one, what, what, what I get teased for middle bar. Um, but it was a huge goal kind of at the biggest stage at the NCAA tournament. So that was exciting. And, um, you know, the, the camera angles were perfect. So yeah. it, it was cool. But a cold the national cool championship moment. was, you know, hands down. Yeah. <laughs> There's not many of them, but they're, they're exciting when I do score. Now, Cody played at Army. He was uh, studying at West Point. Yep. And, uh, and then he went into the military and spent some time in the military. What's he doing now? Yep. So Cody yeah, went to West Point. Um, he's another person that I dreaded playing against at Union. Yeah. For some reason, Union played Army every year. So I got I got to play him three years in a row, um, but, which came with many cross checks, as, as yeah. you can imagine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so he spent, I, I believe, about six or seven years in the Army, yeah. uh, which kind of took him um, around the U.S. to various bases. He spent a lot of time in Anchorage, Alaska, which, you know, if you remember, we grew up there a bit as a kid. So he was... Mm-hmm excited to go back there. And then just recently, maybe two or three years ago, he left the army, um, started with a different company, but now he's actually, he lives in Dallas, Texas and works for, um, Goldman Sachs actually. So, you know, the the West point degree and alumni network is incredible. Um, so, you know, he, you know, with that degree and his experience, he, he found himself a, a, a great job and career down in Texas. Excellent. Excellent. Now you have a younger brother, Dylan, was a big guy. And I remember you and Cody going home at Christmas and almost dreading going home because the rough housing with Dylan was going to be rambunctious. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Dylan was the biggest of the three. I think you now he's, he's, he still is a pretty big guy, six, four, uh, let's say 200 pounds. So he's six, four, six, five, probably. So he's, he's a big guy. Um, but I will say, you know, he never, let's, I wouldn't say he ever scared us, but he never really fought back to me and Cody. And I guess we're kind of lucky for that. Cause if he ever did, and if he ever realized he did, he probably, he probably would have dominated us. So he was always a little scared of us, which is great um, <laughs> for us. But I mean, I remember even, uh, you know, going back to the staff, the Larry Black, the head scout when, yes. when after the second RBC cup, I remember he was talking with my dad and said, do you have any more Ikola brothers? And he's like, well, we actually have one more. And my dad's like, he's six, five, he's 200 pounds. He plays defense. And, you know, he wasn't ever good enough to play at that level. But I remember uh, Larry Black's eyes lighting up thinking, no. you know, there's another <laughs> Ikola brother coming to, to burn and that's even bigger. So, But Dylan played lacrosse, I believe as well. Yep. Yep. Dylan played lacrosse. He played, um, he actually went to Denver university for a little bit, um, right. played on their club team. And he played at Oklahoma university and, yeah, now he lives in Denver, uh, Colorado, works in the uh, renewable energy uh, oh. industry. So does primarily wind and solar uh, business development type work. So another passion of his that he was able to follow through. So your parents, David and Christine, yep. um, yeah, are, are they still in, in Philadelphia? Uh, so, no, so they moved to Dallas, Texas about, oh. I would say maybe 10 years ago now. Yeah, okay. so they've been down there since, uh, both doing well. My dad's looking at retirement within the next two years. So he's pretty excited, but um, yeah. I, I had let him know that we're doing this interview and they wanted me to say hello. Uh, they were okay. pretty excited. So hi dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember them visiting here and they're lovely people, your parents. Um, let's sum up this conversation with some of your memories of Vernon and your impressions of Vernon. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I look back at Vernon and, um, you know, you could say it's the best time. It was the best time of my life. But each each chapter of life is pretty cool. I mean, you know, now yes. I have a, a two and a half year old and twins on the way, and um, really? you know, enjoying a, enjoying a different type of life. Um, but you know, looking back at Vernon, it really was the, probably the best two years of my life. You know, you, you you're 18 years old. 
you get shipped off. You've never lived before, lived alone uh, before, and you're kind of sent to the other side of Canada, 3,000 miles from home and yeah. into an environment of, you know, what feels like a pro environment. Um, like I said, we talked about the supporting staff, great coaches, you know, a 3,000 plus seat arena with fans in a small town. And it's really an amazing experience. And you know, you know, I made the choice to go to college because, you know, after winning the RBC cup twice, those are long seasons. So, yeah. you know, I told myself, I don't know if I can do that. Again. <laughs> I think they made it to the RBC cup final again the next year. So, um, but, but looking back at it, you know, I really wish I played one more year just because you, you can't get an experience like that. And it, you know, it's, it's really incredible. Um, especially that league and that particular team being Vernon in, in that town. Um, just so much history as, as you're more than aware that it really was, um, really was special and, you know, great billet families. I was with Steve and Tina cousins. Okay. I'm not sure if they're still billeting, but they were amazing people that we still uh, connect with uh, via Instagram or Facebook. Um, but no, it was, you know, nothing but great memories um, from the staff to the team, to the arena, to the fans and billet family. So there was n nothing but high remarks for me. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm sure those fans who are watching this conversation would be really happy to see your face again and really happy to hear those comments. Thanks very much for appearing. And um, we, we look forward to some of your children eventually showing up. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so I, I have two daughters, but one of the twins is a boy. So um, we'll, we'll get him training for the Vipers uh, All right. very early in his life. All right. Cole Ikla, well done and thank you. Thanks a lot, Don.